Hi everyone, welcome to the September 2022 edition of Farsight's Human News, the remote viewing news forecast show that tells you what is going to happen, not what did happen. I'm Aziz Brown from Farsight. Before I go on, let's recap what happened with our last human news forecast. What was so great about the August 2022 edition was that we had four very interesting remote viewing news forecast reports, all with lots of detail. The big news of the month was, of course, the FBI raid on Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort that happened in early August 2022. That raid was clearly a near-perfect match for my own session for the month, where I described exactly such a raid. Then, Intisum, Yeme, formerly Princess, and Kamaya all reported on explosions in an urban area, all of which were a good match for the second major story of the month, which was the ongoing war in Ukraine. The most troubling element of the war is the fighting in and around a Ukrainian nuclear power plant that is occupied by Russian forces. The final report was by Shante, and she reported on something where children or refugees were being collected or processed by authorities. We are not sure what that report refers to. Hopefully, it never happened. So, we had one report that closely matched the very specific and unusual Mar-a-Lago event, and we had three reports that matched the very unfortunate events in Ukraine. And we had one as yet unexplained event. All in all, not bad for remote viewing, August 2022. As before, I want to emphasize that our viewers do these human news reports with only one session each. With many of our other projects, such as our mysteries projects, the viewers return to the target more than once to get enough details to sort out what is actually going on. Nonetheless, given only one session each for our August human news reports, in our view, these results are pretty good. Now let me announce our next major mysteries project, the Battle of Dulcie. You heard that right. In 1979, there was a reported incident in which the United States government was tunneling into the ground near Arcoleta Mesa, not far from the town of Dulce, New Mexico, which is in the north of New Mexico, near the Colorado border. The tunneling was part of an attempt to build a dumb facility, or a deep underground military base, similar to the one at Cheyenne Mountain. The U.S. had many such bases. The incident was reported by Philip Schneider, who was said to have been a government structural engineer involved in the initial tunneling and construction process. He eventually gave a few public talks on the subject, and he appeared to be a very credible witness. He had some of his fingers blown off during the event. According to his reports, U.S. military forces accidentally surprised extraterrestrials during the tunneling process, and there was a shootout. Apparently, some extraterrestrials had their own underground bases in the same spot, probably chosen for the same reasons. It is said that over 60 military personnel died in the event. Philip Schneider was one of three people who survived. Then, he mysteriously died in 1996. The official report said that it was a suicide, but there were strangulation marks on his neck. And, to be blunt, quite a few people think that he was murdered. He had missing fingers on one hand, and limited movement capabilities with his shoulders. And so, it is not known how he could have strangled himself. He owned a handgun, so if he wanted to kill himself, it seems like shooting himself would be the only reasonable way to do it. So, investigating whether or not there is an underground extraterrestrial base near Dulce, New Mexico, and whether or not there was a battle at that location in 1979 seemed like a great mystery for us to pursue. And we did. Phil Schneider gave lots of details relating to the event, so we had lots of things that we could corroborate if the base and the event were in fact real. Friends, it is time for you to see and hear firsthand what actually happened underground near Dulce, New Mexico in 1979. On the 15th of September 2022, you will find out all recorded live on video under clean scientific conditions right here on farsightprime.com. Friends, you really want to see this report. Now, let me change the topic to address something that is really important. These are changing times and there are encroaching levels of censorship that are happening in all the major media outlets, including social media. So, it has been important for us to continue to develop farsightprime.com, our own streaming service, so that you can be best served by it.
We have now enabled farsightprime.com to have a free section that contains everything that we offer or used to offer for free on YouTube, including our large library of instructional videos. The only thing that you need is an email to register for our site and to see our free content. Now, all of our premium releases still require a paid subscription, but what was previously free only on YouTube is now free on farsightprime.com as well. And that includes our human news project, the projects on the JFK assassination, 9-11, all of our time cross projects, and again, all of our remote viewing instructional videos. As an extra benefit, the video and audio quality on farsightprime.com is a bit better than on YouTube. You can also use our free Android and Apple apps with your phone and even project our content to your television. Again, our paid subscription content is the same as before and it is growing each month. But now everything is on farsightprime.com in one convenient location. Farsightprime.com is the best place to view all of our video content, but YouTube is still important. We are definitely not giving up on YouTube. We will continue to post our human news and other free content on YouTube, including our trailers for our major projects. And we still rely on YouTube for our live streams, which we are expanding. So you want to keep subscribed to our YouTube channel as well. But now, friends, let me explain what is happening behind the scenes. Farsight is clearly the leading outlet for remote viewing content anywhere. And if you search for the words remote viewing on any of the major search engines, Farsight comes out near the top of the search, except for Google and YouTube. For Google and YouTube, Farsight does not appear at all. It is called shadow banning. And for us, this started around June 2021. We are not complaining. YouTube has been wonderful to us over the years, and we are very grateful. But YouTube has changed, and the more important we become, the more we caught the eye of those who worry about non-standard content. YouTube is no longer an outlet for alternative viewpoints, as it was in the old days, when it was an alternative for the blandness of cable. Now, cable is going away, and YouTube has positioned itself to take the place of cable's bland offerings. YouTube is now a great outlet for things like animal videos, makeup and cooking tutorials, wingsuit and parachute flights, and the like. But many things controversial get shadow banned or nixed. Again, we are not criticizing YouTube or Google. They simply made corporate decisions that redirect where they want their company to grow in the future. It's a business decision and we respect that. But then we at Farsight had no choice but to make sure that all of our content that previously existed on YouTube is also available for everyone to see for free on farsightprime.com. We want the best for YouTube, but these are changing times and we have to be prepared. So if you like watching our free content on YouTube, including our human news show, please try to watch it on farsightprime.com. You will like it. The quality is great. And the more you see our free content, the more you may want to see our premium content as well by becoming a paid subscriber of farsightprime.com. You can't find anything like our mysteries projects anywhere else. Plus, you get the full version of ET News, all the intelligence briefings, economic forecasts, more conversations with Harvey, recordings of our live streams, and so much more. Finally, and this is important, if you watch shows in other venues that address the subjects of extraterrestrials or ancient and current mysteries, what you get is a format that is basically a talking head mixed with lots of stock videos and background music. In law, they call that hearsay. It may be interesting, but it is not going to change the world. But what you get at farsightprime.com is very different. At farsightprime.com, you get raw data collected by highly trained remote viewers who have extensive experience working with public projects under totally blind and scientifically clean conditions. Raw data, real data, all recorded live with high quality. That is something that you can't find anywhere else. What you get at Farsight is worth every minute of your watching time. Moving on. For those of you who want to personalize instruction in remote viewing, Yeme Jene and Intisum are teaching remote viewing, both individually and in groups. 
Our methods are sufficiently complex that we use pre-printed templates for our sessions. Yeme and Intisum can work with you individually or in groups as you learn to use these methods. Our approaches address a wide range of applications that we do here at Farsight, including investment evaluations and forecasting. We do lots of stuff that nobody else does, and it is a big subject. But for those who are interested, Yeme and Intisum will show you how we do what we do. But be patient in learning any of our methods. Nothing that we do was learned in a day. Also understand that when Yeme and Intisum teach remote viewing, no one at Farsight gets any financial benefit from this. Yeme and Intisum do this entirely on their own. Remember also that there is a large collection of instructional videos on farsightprime.com. Also, we continue to release new Seco Plus projects for those of you who like to follow cryptocurrencies. Information about this can be found on our website, farsight.org. Our forecasts are available for free to see on YouTube, but the identities of the currencies and other elements are sold separately on our website, farsight.org. Cryptocurrencies are on the move, so now is a good time to think about such things. Also, in many of our forecasts, we predict lows in the cryptocurrency markets around this time period. So the current bear markets for cryptocurrencies were expected. Again, our forecasts are for five years, so we are thinking for long-term gains in cryptocurrency adoption. Again, as with all of our economic forecasts of any type, including our SECO and SECO Plus forecasts, no one at Farsight is a licensed financial advisor, and we do this for entertainment and educational purposes only. Nonetheless, we feel that as we continue to do this, it will become increasingly difficult for people to doubt the reality of remote viewing. Also, we could really use your help if you share our YouTube content with your friends. Be sure to like our videos, but really try to click the share button and send our content to your friends. Word of mouth has always been the best way to spread really new ideas. Relying on institutions to make fundamental changes in our world is almost a contradiction in terms. Real change happens from the actions of people, not institutions. Institutions resist change, and they always have, and they always will. Since all of you are people, help us make the change happen. It's a people thing. Moving on. How do you hear about all of our activities that we do at Farsight so that you can participate and get the latest when they happen, including our live streams? To start with, we use our email list and YouTube to make our major event announcements. So there are two things that you need to do. First, you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel and remember to click the notifications bell that appears after you subscribe. That is the only way that YouTube will notify you of the new events, especially our live stream events. Just subscribing doesn't actually do anything. The notifications bell is the important part, but that only notifies you of things that we release on YouTube. To be notified about the things that we release on farsightprime.com, which you can watch using our Apple and Android apps on the web and on your home television, you need to subscribe to our free email newsletter found on our website at farsight.org. You can also allow our apps to notify you of our new releases on farsightprime.com. Be sure to do all three things. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Farsight, and remember to click on the notifications bell. And then subscribe to our free email newsletter that you can find on our website. And finally, go to the settings of our app and allow it to give you notifications for our new releases on farsightprime.com. The links for YouTube and our newsletter are in the description area below this video. And the app is, well, it's on your phone. Those are how we announce what we do. We never send out spam, and we never give our subscriber list to anyone else for any purpose. Now, let's move on to this month's human news forecast for September 2022. Remember, we could always be wrong, and all remote viewing must be seen as an experiment, not a certainty. But look at the data for yourself, make your own decisions, and then let's watch the month roll out to see exactly what happens. We have five remote viewers who participated in this month's project. Kamaya Dunson, Yeme Janae, Intisum, Shante, and myself, Aziz Brown. These reports are amazing to watch. It is best for you to just watch them yourself without me trying to explain them in advance. So let's begin our forecast for 2022. I will return after all the reports are presented to help pull everything together.
starting out, I have level topography here. There's land and there's water. So here's land, and then the land kind of looks like it comes out a little bit like that. And then this is the water over here. Okay, so this is the interface. This kind of looks um, like a beach or a shoreline. That's kind of what this line is. And there's structures over here. They feel like really far away though. They're just kind of scattered structures about, you know, like that. So scattered structures. There's subjects on the base surface. There's subjects right here on the land. And then I also sense that there's subjects um, on the water as well. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of like tans and golds and yellows. It's warm outside. Um, and then there's, like I said, there's structures on this land, but there's also a structure on the water. And it's kind of shaped like that. It has like a peak um, or a pointed front. And then um, it's real big. There looks like there's some sort of maybe like guardrail at the front of it as well. Maybe there's something else like on the back. Okay. There are many subjects on here, male and female subjects. Um, it feels just very casual. Everyone's wearing very casual clothing. Um, everyone seems to be on this structure right here that's on the water. I'm hearing a lot of natural sounds, a lot of man-made sounds, talking, shouting, um, just voices in general. I hear the sounds of like big waves kind of um, like crashing into something. So it just sounds like I'm definitely out here in, in the middle of a large body of water. So now I'm kind of seeing this structure um, in a different, place instead of it just kind of sitting on top of the water now it looks like it's maybe in the water like halfway in the water i can see this kind of peak thing right here and then it just water kind of all over it okay it's like kind of water crashing around it um this is it like under the water and then there are a lot of subjects here, um, not a lot, but just more than just a few, you know, there's a good, like, decent group of subjects here. All these subjects are in the water at this point. Um, it does feel like there's maybe one inside still, uh, but for the most part, everyone seems to be just kind of out in the open in the water. My next visual, I see this kind of pointed, um, structure and I can see a wall that's kind of around it and it looks like this and this is kind of just like a top view right so I see that then I see that there are subjects here and they all kind of look um, like they're not necessarily like all paired off but they look separate but together. <laughs> so like they're all together on this structure, right? But they're all kind of in their own little niche or in their little group. There's also like um, items or some sort of like smaller structures on the structure and they kind of look just like couches or just something for people to sit on. And I can just see the water around them as well. So this is kind of what it's looking like. We've got some sort of beach line or shoreline structures that are way, way out there, like a distant city. And then some sort of structures on the water that was chilling. And now it looks like it's halfway in the water. This is kind of what it looks like from a top view. Very casual seating, like, you know, it just feels like there's some sort of party or something like they're just separate. Um, something that they're celebrating or just something like that. Like it feels very up and happy, but very casual at the same time. And then, um, yeah, a lot of subjects are out here in the water. 
um, just kind of floating around. I do feel like my chest is kind of heavy when I'm probing these subjects around in the water. So maybe like they're kind of like struggling to swim, but it doesn't feel like anybody um, dies here, which is good. Okay, hmm. moving to the target event. I hear a lot of subjects like for one screaming, yelling, um, it sounds very chaotic. I hear the sounds of the waves again crashing into things. And, you know, I see a lot of blues and it's, it smells like, um, like fish, salt, like salty fish water. And it feels just like a lot is going on. Um, the, the structure seems to be like sinking, falling, seeping <laughs> deeper into the water um, and it's just like water just keeps pouring into this structure and as that's happening of course the structure gets lower in the water. Um, there's a lot of subjects floating around. Everyone seems to be like a little freaked out but for the most part you know like everyone has everyone that they're looking for. There does seem to be like one person like I said that seems to be um, missing or still stuck on this structure and I can kind of see them actually like when it all happens it's like this uh, a big wall here there's like a big wall and then there's a subject in front of this wall the subject is a like pale very light-skinned um, male they have very short, like almost curly hair. It's like that wavy hair. Um, and it's brown and it's short. They have um, they have just like, you know, pretty common facial features. Nothing really sticks out about them per se. So they look like, you know, average Joe. But um, on this, on this structure here. This subject seems to be kind of reaching out at something, uh, or maybe not at something, but it looks like they've got something in their hands that maybe, um, you know, it kind of feels like they're pushing up against the wall though, Does, if that makes sense. like. The wall feels heavy itself, like the wall feels like it's pushing in general. Then this subject feels like it's pushing against the push. So it's almost like, you know, it feels like they're trying to stop something. I do also see in this, um, like maybe these little, not like holes, like they don't look like intentional holes, but they do look like holes in the wall where water seems to be kind of leaking in and slowly filling up the area. So maybe this is like where it started. So yeah, the, you know, what's basically happening here is there's some sort of structure that's on this water that's pretty far from the shoreline. Not too far because you can see like the shoreline still, but they're kind of just like out there maybe floating about. Um, they're all having a good time, they're hanging out. Something happens underneath where it causes maybe the pressure is too much. Cause like I said, it felt like something was pushing up against the wall. So the pressure is too much and then the pressure is causing like the, the water to spill into this structure, causing the structure to um, sink into the water. This section here seemed like they're trying to stop it and it, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem successful because the structure does end up sinking at the end of the day. Um, everybody lives, so this subject does make it out, but I think they were like one of the last ones to get out because they were just trying to make, you know, trying to see if they could fix the problem, but unfortunately, not possible. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's all I have for this target. Alright, so for this target, I'm seeing an environment that is um, a mix of both natural and man-made. I'm seeing this natural structure. It's got a flat top, um, kind of like 
a mesa, so it's quite natural. And it's pretty large, and this is kind of like the backdrop of this environment. I'm also picking up some water right here. This water, um, it's kind of, it's, it's not extensive, first of all, right? Um, and it's also thick, a little bit thicker than you'd think, like, you know, a lake or a river would be. Um, and it's also brown, so it's not too extensive. I'm also picking up a bunch of other structures that are kind of like at the base of this. So, and then this seems to be like the urban um, center here. When I probe for, is this a city? No, it's not a city. It's, it's not big enough to be a city, so I would call it more like a town. There are subjects here. Okay, and then I think this is kind of like a road, something like that. Okay, so, so f at the edges, all the structures are kind of like around the same area, but around the edges, there seems to be some sort of like a golden colored grass that is pretty extensive, like it's everywhere, so. deduct something like crops, you know, because it kind of does give me a feel of like a um, farming town. They're just like, yeah, make another deduction of like a plot, you know, like ranches, you, you get the gist. That is this goldeny color. Um, Almost like maybe like dried wheat or or dry corn, something like that. That is all through the edges of this town. And then you have a few more structures that you can see right here. Okay, so I'm picking up that the subjects are somewhere here. And it seems like a crowd has formed. And I'm hearing talking, I'm hearing shouting. The other thing that I'm really picking up is that the air here is kind of nasty, like it smells bad. And I can tell that it's not healthy air. There's kind of like a, un, yeah, like pollution. Like it's not safe for you to breathe this in. It can't be safe for you to breathe this in. It's just. Hmm. Quick deduction. Salt Lake City. I'm deducting this because of this. The lake, that's the water structure that's drying up. And there's an issue in Salt Lake where the, the whole lake is drying up and um, it's going to become like a huge pollution issue because of the arsenic at the base. So there's something about that, you know, that's tying into that plus the mountain, even though this is a flat top mountain. Um, okay, so that's my first pass. Okay, for my next movement exercise, I'm going to move to the target activity. Okay, so I'm picking up a lot of commotion. You have the structures. And you have the subjects that are, the uh, emotions are high. Emotions are definitely high here. There's a lot of shouting at each other. Um, so, like, there's this one subject right here is wearing like a cap. And he's pointing at this guy, like, mm, mm, you know, he's like angrily pointing. This is little, his little like bunched up fist. And there's this other subject, I can tell this one is a woman. And there's both mixes of like both women and men. Uh, 
Okay, sensing another group. There's another guy right here. He's also screaming and he's wearing a little hat. And there's his bunched up arms, hands. Yeah, he's. Yeah, emotions are definitely high here. And all of the commotion is happening around the small urban area. So here's someone else. I don't know what this guy is holding up. Maybe it's like violence is about to erupt, right? To somebody else. So I'm seeing like two distinct group forming. Okay. That's pretty much all of the target activity at this time. So next I'm going to move to the target event. There's definitely a disagreement here. It's like an argument about a disagreement, seemingly about a disagreement anyway, um, that's being expressed. And the main emotion here is anger. That's like... The main emotion is just these people are furious. Okay, doing a collective deep mind probe. Okay, there's something, these tar targets are like, um, they're angry and they're shouting about something that's affecting their community. Um, most of the thoughts are grounded towards my community, like my home or my land. So there's like a big my, something about something I own, whether it's like a home or land or like the whole, maybe this community that's been affected here. And these people are angry about that. Um, again, there's two groups, right? So like I have, I'm going to call them there's a group A and group B. Yeah, you can see, you can sense like the division. Like I'm not sensing more than two groups at this time, um, but let's do a deep mind probe to find out exactly what, what the stances are. All right, so focusing in on group A, the main thing here is they feel as though there is encroachment happening um, i'm guessing encroach and group b is encroaching upon group a and that's leading to their resources being abused water i'm hearing the word water like that's like i feel like it's a theme here although the whole theme is kind of geared towards the environment something about resources that were available before, not being available now. And those resources are being ruined by whatever group B is. I'm almost thinking like maybe group B is like a corporation, so deduct a corporation. Yeah, yeah, they feel like we've always had this. We've always had this land. We've always had this, I don't know, this water. But suddenly you come along and now these resources are being ruined and it's leaving them in a really, really tough position because of that. Because I'm feeling like these resources, they're part of their um, livelihood. Maybe it's some like, maybe it's a, like an environmental issue, but that's also a deduction. And I'm saying this because of that stinky smell that I could smell and because of the water that doesn't feel like how it should be, doesn't feel fresh. Okay, so that's group A's mindset at this time. Um, group B. OK, 
okay, group B are essentially saying or thinking that, well, we compensated you for the resources, so this shouldn't even be an argument. Like there was some sort of compensation that happened, like we came here, we paid you or something like that. Um, which is why, which is also the deduction that corporations have so much money that they might lack some accountability because they come buy out something and then that's the end of it, right? Yeah, and I'm also hearing like, we paid you, so shut up, kind of thing. And there's like a completely lack of um, responsibility. They're not willing to take any responsibility. Are they the ones that kind of affected this environment? Maybe. According to Group A, they definitely are. But apparently Group B compensated this area financially. And they're not willing to take any responsibility for what is now happening, which is affecting the livelihood of Group A. All right, so my last movement exercise will be to show you a snapshot of this whole environment from a bird's eye view, 5,000 feet up. So 5,000 feet looking downwards. Uh, of course, I have my uh, large structure, my large like uh, mountain slash mesa that is the focal point of this whole area. I also have the water that is kind of running like this. So it was running down. And then there is the structures, the small urban area right here. Also, it's kind of structures um, scattered about. There's not too many, definitely not too many. And then I have what is part of the dominant element here, which is this foliage that is um, pretty much everywhere. So almost looks like a classic country scene, right? Like driving through the country and you see all these farmlands. That's what it kind of looks like. All right, that's all I have for this target. Forgot one part. Um, when I probe towards the south of this, I'm seeing something here. Um, I'm gonna say garbage. I don't know. There's something also unhealthy, also smelly. It's kind of like, I'm just seeing kind of like a depression and then a bunch of like random stuff. I can't tell what it is. So this garbage, is a deduction. There's a lot of structures here, very urban environment. I've got a lot of cloud dynamics, smokes, loud noises. I've got some flat land. A lot of movement energetics here. I've got tall city-like structures, explosive energetics. I'm getting some gray smoke peaks, some scattered subjects. I can't tell if the smoke is near or coming out of the structures. There's multiple of this. I can't feel if this is a terroristic or like a riot type of thing going on here, but it's chaotic and it's smoke and it's all over the place, and then there's structures, there's darkness. What is going on here? There's a lot of chaotic movement by the subjects. <clears throat> loud screaming, booming, roaring, excitement and angst. Multiple subjects here, movement and activity by these subjects. The energy is happy, but also destructive. Um, 
in the structure and on base surface of a deduction of looting. Looting. There's so much craziness in 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 in, 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 in mo movement and abrasion. It's just so abrasive. Um, yeah, it's abrasive. I've got some non-surface structures up here. It feels like helicopters. I'm deducting helicopters, and it's just chaos in this town, in this city, um, near these structures. It's so much destruction, mountains, uh, death or hurt subjects. I've got peaks with flatted structures, with flat land and structures and, and flat topped structures, large bright lights, dysfunction. I've got what feels like, again, like partying, looting, destroying something. I've got a riot or a roar, a riot or a war. I also have the feeling of terroristic attack. All of these are deductions. Uh, things are burning. Things are flying in the air. Smoke fills the air. There's just debris. People are running like fast all over the place, knocking people over, pushing people, stepping on people. Just subjects, subjects. It's just it's too much to see at once. It's, subjects just flood the streets. It, it's it's so much happening. I've got movement by these subjects, by vehicles, on the surface, by non-surface structures, fire, chaotic activity. Just so much chaos on this base surface here. My my base surface, my, my land here feels like, like pebbles, rock, tar, grass also. It's rough. I'm seeing colors of gray, black, white, hard, roughness. Uh, Extensive life is here. Uniforms and casual wear. Is it a dual standoff? I don't know. But it's crazy. So crazy. I've got structure, big structure. It looks like a stage of some sort, or I could be wrong on what that is. I'm not sure. This, you know, land that appears to be a road with structures on each side, and then Structures again, <clears throat> you know, often this in subjects, mainland, road, street type thing here, and like mountains off in the back, or peaks. These peaks could be anything. Non surface structures. <sighs> These roars. Uh, there appears to be dislodging something. Subjects, again, they just sweep the streets in disarray. And structures are collapsing. I don't, I don't know if they're collapsing or breaking, burning. Just so much. So, so much chaos and disarray. What is this world coming to? All right, Aziz, welcome for the September 2022 edition, Time Flies, of uh, Human News, of Human News. So uh, for this event that you have uh, gotten for September 2022, why don't you just jump right into it? What do you, what do you have here? What, is the, what are you seeing here? Uh, maybe a traffic jam of some sorts, but uh, it just seems like there's a lot of larger objects in the middle of the road. 
So page four and page five. Okay, so what do we have for uh, page six and seven? What's going on there? So uh, page six is when I started to notice subjects. Uh, it seems like there were multiple subjects that were moving within that environment that we just described. And that basically is the extra data that I've picked up over and above what we saw previously uh, with page four and five on page six. And page seven actually seems to show the road clearing up uh, as it sort of moves up this hill towards this area with more foliage and the road sort of curves in this direction that's off of where it was previously with all the vehicles and structures in that other area. Okay, and before on page six, the vehicles you say here are stationary in the road, like some of them are moving, but uh, others are not moving? Yeah, it, uh, it did give the sort of general vibe of a traffic jam. So, I mean, there was movement. The subjects are moving. There could be some of the vehicles in motion, but it didn't seem like there was that much motion when it came to the vehicles in particular. Most of the motion that I was seeing was from the subjects around the outside of the structures and the vehicles. Okay, you seem to pick that up again on uh, page 8. Why don't you move into page 8 and page 9? What's going on there? So page 8 is more of those subjects seeming to get in towards a crowd, and they are all running now up the road that was surrounded not by structures anymore, but by foliage. So it went from a man-made environment to a more natural area, with lots of subjects running up the uh, the road, so yeah, yeah, that's that's the beginning of what I think of as weird. That makes this a little different. The subjects running up the road, and what do you see on page nine? So uh, page nine sort of gives a wider perspective of something that I picked up actually in page eight, which was a wide, largest structure at sort of the precipice of this sloped area. Um, I didn't really follow the sloped area all the way, but it seemed like, from the general sense, a natural area that's on the edge of this urban area space, and that natural area had a structure, a wider, uh, lighter hue structure, and a lot of subjects were running up the road to that structure in a hectic crowd. Hmm. All right, so those, <laughs> that's interesting. So big, a crowd is heading towards that structure that's a little bit uh, either outside of the urban area or in uh, an area in the urban area that has foliage around it. Yeah, that is what I was perceiving. Okay, what do you have on page 10? Some notes here. So that was basically just probing the general activity I was seeing frantic high energy, uh, picking that up off the subjects that were running up that hill, and a much that just the slope that was going up to the structure and the foliage along the outside of that road or pathway, where previously, of course, there was, uh, in the area where there were structures, there were vehicles. So this new road seems to have subjects and foliage. You have anything you want to add about page 13? Not really. It seems like after page 13 is when the environment really changes, but up until now we really just have urban area with a road going right through it, sort of a traffic jam situation going on in the urban area, and then subjects running on foot up to this uh, structure up a slope that was surrounded by foliage, this whitish structure. Uh, but let's go now to page 14, because this is looking different. Yeah, so page 14, actually, I'm starting to pick up more of the general demeanor and energy of the subjects that are running up to the structure. Uh, I've mentioned previously a lot of frantic and high energy, but the subjects I'm seeing are yelling, they're in an energetic state, and we do see sort of a mob vibe sort of showing itself from these perceptions. Actually, when we go on to page 15, it really does seem to become a bit more violent as this mob of subjects presses themselves up against the structure 
and it seems like they are pressing themselves up against the windows and the doors and behaving rather violently towards the structure, pulling things off the structure and pushing on the structure. Seems like they're trying to break in. Oh, wow. Okay, so people are breaking into this structure. A mob, yeah. a mob, a mob crashing the structure. All right, yes. let's go then to page 16. What do we see? Wow, things are getting out of control. Page 16. Yeah. What's going on on page 16? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's obvious from the drawing here on page 16 that the mob of subjects are rather very energetic and rather angrily yelling at this point, just bursting into the structure. Um, quick uh, collective deep mind probes of the subjects present. There seems to be a couple subjects on the inside of the structure, absolutely terrified, completely helpless, not really knowing what to do. And other subjects just, they, they break through the door. Uh, some of them seem to be getting through the window and they are rushing towards these other subjects. And it seems like they, I, I mean, they're sort of attacking one subject, but it's more of like grabbing them and yanking them in multiple directions while yelling at the same time. And uh, the other subjects are sort of just hands up like, oh, like they don't really, they can't really do anything about it. They're just sort of frozen. Wow. All right, well, your last page is, uh the final moment and uh, what do you have on that page yeah so i wanted to see what else the, just out of curiosity this is an extra page actually that i did but i just wanted to see what else is the mob gonna do in this structure and i saw them running up the stairs going through more areas of the structure and grabbing this uh seemingly older gentleman who has some lighter hues hair relative to the skin and they uh, they just grab him and just drag him out of what seems to be a room that he was just sitting in. So uh, he he was sitting, uh, just an old, older male, sitting in a room, and this mob breaks in and grabs him and pulls him out. And that was where I stopped uh, probing, so that does conclude all of my data for this session. Well, it's an interesting session. We'll see what happens, and in September... 2022. I'm sure the audience is going to be very interested to see what goes on with this as well. For my first visual, I have a, a base surface with uh, irregular topography, seeing a lot of like hilly land. Um, and so I'm like bigger hills and there's warm temperatures here. There's natural land, but I'm seeing a lot of man-made land here as well. And there's oh, it's a different color and seeing multiple surface structures. They're kind of like in what looks like a valley um, yeah. Let's see, I'm also seeing like a moderate amount of foliage, but overall it feels kind of dry or like the air feels kind of like dusty here. Um, yeah, so. So zooming into this area, what seems like an urban environment, um, have multiple surface structures. There seems to be a lot of variation in size. Most of them seem fairly small, uh, but I do have a few structures that are really like sticking out, very large. Um, but most of these structures seem small and I have kind of like a, say like a, a body of water here, but it doesn't, it feels kind of artificial and there's a little bit of foliage throughout these areas, but it's mostly man-made like urban environment. So... 
I'm picking up a lot of activity like in more so in these larger structures is what's like standing out and like if I go inside um, one of them I'm seeing what looks like like it's really large but they have these like Kind of like a platform or like a separate level and but it's all one like open area so like there's subjects inside this structure and there's subjects kind of a few at these different on these different platforms, but they can all like see each other. Like it's just one big room basically. Um, and I'm sensing a lot of, there's like multi-directional movement. Uh, it is fairly loud in here, but the subjects are, they're just, it feels kind of unorganized really. Like I see, Subjects are like moving objects. Um, there's kind of looks like they're like kind of throwing things, uh, kind of like like just tossing stuff around. Um, but I also have some other subjects that are like, these subjects are like shouting and I guess the subjects they're shouting to seem very unfazed. Like they're not, they're ignoring him. They're kind of like not paying like the shouting subjects much attention but there's shouting sounds here there's like loud sounds like sounds of things dropping or like crashing because um, they're throwing things uh, it, it just feels very unorganized and the general feel of the subjects here they feel kind of like subjects feel miserable here in this structure. Um, yeah, but there have a lot of movement by these subjects, all in different directions. They're not really moving together. They're all just kind of doing their own thing, it seems like. So if I get a view from this structure, from like one of these top, like, levels it's like so it's this platform and it's kind of like overlooking everything so these subjects there's only a few subjects up here um, and I have some movement by them. They seem to mainly stay at the top. Like once they're up here, they're not really like going down or anything, but they're up here. And from this area, I can see there are these very large like container objects like really large. Um, so like the subjects are kind of like that size. These containers are huge. Uh, and there's subjects just kind of walking, moving around this area. And it's really hot in here, like at very hot temperatures. So it seems like mainly coming from these 
container like they're generating heat and it looks like there's like multiple different types of objects inside of them it's all like man-made materials and is very like hot in here like extremely hot uh Yeah, so I'm picking up heat energetics and I'm also picking up like fire from like one of these containers. Um, so there's like fire that I'm seeing here and the subjects don't seem I'm not gonna say they don't see concerned, but they're not immediately like panicking. Um, maybe like if I had to make a deduction, like maybe it's some type of like furnace or something that's supposed to be very hot, something like that. Um, but the subjects here seem to be somewhat used to the temperature inside. So it's not, they're not like immediately alert alerted I guess um, and the thing about like one of these specific subjects at the on the top platform uh, like if I'm looking for the the cause of this event it feels like it's due to a specific subject I'll call them subject a so this subject he looks somewhat old, has like thinning, kind of gray and white hair, very light complexion. And he has, he looks like exhausted, kind of old maybe like i say he's at least in his 40s and so this is subject a and he's one of the subjects that's on this platform maybe supposed to be like watching or something uh helping with the organization of these subjects or area and he just It could have been intentional that this fire started due to this subject, but he just seems kind of out of it in this moment. And honestly, like doing a deep mind probe, he's not thinking about much of anything. He seems somewhat negative, but not He's not really making me uncomfortable. Like, he's not someone I would choose to be around, but he's not like a, doesn't feel like a bad person overall. And the general feel of, like how do the subjects around him feel about this subject? It's like none of these subjects really know each other that well. So they really don't have like any expectations for one another but he feels like this subject has some sort of responsibility regarding this the fire energetics that I'm sensing inside this structure and it is dangerous like this is, activity in general inside of the structure feels dangerous like the way people are like throwing stuff around and just kind of doing what they want it feels like but with the fire it feels more dangerous here and it just seems like a lot of the subjects here are unaware 
Okay, so let's draw some conclusions for these data. September 2022 is going to be an interesting month. The reported events for September seem quite diverse. Thus, it seems that no single event will dominate the news in September. Two of the sessions seem to involve fire in an urban area and possible structures collapsing. One session seems to focus on a water-related event involving flooding or submersion. Another session seems to focus on the confrontation between two opposing groups due to the sense of land encroachment. And the remaining session seems to focus on a group that breaks into a structure and pulls out an older male. Again, it does seem like those sessions point to a very interesting month for September. Now, we wait and see what actually happens. So, that is our September 2022 edition of Farsight's Human News. The news before it happens. Thank you for watching. Also, please join us next month in October 2022 for another look into the future of Earth humans. Also on FarsightPrime.com, be sure to look out for our next major mysteries project that will appear in September, the Battle of Dulce, our live stream events, the Farsight ET News, the monthly intelligence briefing, more conversations with Harvey, as well as new Farsight economic forecasts. And remember, we do Farsight at Farsight. Farsight is our style of remote viewing, and vocabulary is important in these changing times. I'm Aziz Brown from Farsight. Stay ahead of the curve. Let the mainstream fade in the dust. Be there now.